Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me again. Uh, just another quick vlog. This time I wanted to talk about uh, forming metal again. Uh, I'll probably keep coming back to this for different reasons uh, over a period of time. But today's episode I want to talk about part I've just finished. I was, as I was grinding this and tidying up the edges, taking off the tool marks, um, it occurred to me that this is a good one to show you know, some of the fun you can have when you design shapes. Um, the important thing with this is, I, you know, when we designed this product, which is one of our popular products, I didn't want it to be just a straight boxy shape. So we put this uh, sort of chamfer along the, the front just to give it a bit of styling. Um, it works quite well, it looks quite effective when it's formed up, as you'll see shortly. Um, but that in, in itself actually causes problems on our particular machine. And I think I mentioned this before, every machine is slightly different in how they work. Um, and you need to adapt your processes to suit the machine, the, the press brake that you're using, whether it's just a set of drawers and advice, or whether you've got a, a full press brake. Um, but this one, with the bend that I've got to achieve just here, to fold these tabs over, is, is below the line, sorry, I'm doing this in the back, below the line here, on the top there. Uh, so I need to make sure this is not the bender doesn't basically bend or deform this edge while we're shaping the tabs over here and there is some tabs at either end. So what I thought I'd do is this would be a great one to show you quickly some of the fun I have trying to get parts to fit. So we'll get it set up on the uh, press brake and we'll give it a bash. Uh, now over the press brake, um, this is what I showed you the day in the video, um, I've, I've got a, a, quite a few parts that look like this, that I set up, and these allow me to quickly uh, set the backstop to the depth I want for a particular uh, bends. So this one is a 25 mil. So if I put that in there, the square just falls into the V block there. This goes into the stop at the back. And I put that in there and do the same on that side. I want to set the, I've got some uh, stops here that allow this this part to flip up. Um, I've set that so it's loose, so it doesn't get in the way to do these bends as they go. Now then, um, the important thing is that they're all 25, all the bends at the outside edge are 25. I've done that deliberately uh, just to simplify this part and then obviously we've got two bigger bends in the middle. Um, so what we need to do, uh, first of all, is uh, quickly uh, form these two flanges on these sides. Now the, the issue with these two flanges being, uh, as I say, it gets in the way of that. So if I had to put that in there, uh, as you can see, if I just drop that down, I'm going to deform this part of the edge here. So in order to get this bit to bend to the required depth, I have to stick this end out of the end of my uh, machine over here to it's clear to this point. So I'll just move that plastic up to there. The plastic just uh, prevents, in case anyone's interested, just prevents the uh, V bar, bar in the middle, in the bottom, from uh, marking uh, the metal. It's just a, a, a protective film. Um, it, it adds a bit of Lubrication, for want of a better word. Okay, so once I know that's in the right place and it's not going to deform the part next to it, I need to go over a little bit more. That's looking, looking good there. So I can uh, press that one. And I've got my first bend, but most of the part will stick out the edge. Now again, this is the part of the way that this machine's designed. Because of the curves at the end, it allows the flexibility for me to uh, stick the parts out the end there. Um, I don't know if all machines are going to be the same, to be fair, uh, but I, I would imagine most of them have at least some kind of overlap uh, that goes there. Now obviously, I have the same problem the other end, and I have to do that. Uh, at the other end of the machine. Uh, 
Okay, so this 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 end I have to do over here like this. So again, it's exactly the same. Just enough on. I've got just enough metal there to get this shape going. Make sure it's on the right position, and then we come down appropriately with a bar. Sorry, my arms in the way. And even the handle got in the way of the part at that point. I just need to. Adjust my handle a little bit, that will help. Just put that back in. These are the challenges you see that you've got to work around. And there we go. So that's now formed into the right shape and I've not managed to interfere with this. Right, so we've got the Two sides done, so now we've just got to form uh, these parts here. Uh, and as you can see with this part here, if I were to put it in metal just there and bend that up, these two edges are going to catch on this the blade here. So we need to put it on a blade that is narrower than the part itself. So when I form it, these two can swing past. So we'll put it on that one there. Again, I'm pushing it to the back, making sure that's down. Put my hand across, I do apologise, I keep putting my hand in the way. Just make that a bit longer again. Sorry, the handle's adjustable at the sides. Help. And then we'll do the same on this side. Oh, this side doesn't really matter. We can choose any one of the blades for this side because there's nothing there. I don't want that flap going up as it was. I didn't need the flap adjustment. This stage. There you go. So now, if I zoom back out again. All right, the camera's upside down. We've got the part. Is it going any further? A little bit. Yeah, the part formed. Got the two side uh, brackets. Got the two end sections and that's the 25 mil bit 25 millimeter bends done as i say we've kept them all simple to make them nice and quick to do uh, i've now just got to put two more bends in to form the part up so i'll go and get those measurements we'll get that sorted out okay so this the next folds are about 100 millimeters um uh, distance but there is obviously the thickness of the metal on as well and the bend there so i need to add a little bit on for that um, so I've made them 102, it just gives me uh, a closer measure, measure. I had to use the ruler on that occasion. Just notice that one's just off a little bit, so I give that a snug. Yep, yeah, that's looking good. Okay, so now we've got to bend the two at 100 millimeters. And again, this is just a case of putting this in. Uh, I'll put this one here again because of that sidebar there. Probably won't affect it that much, but I don't want it to catch on anything. It's gone back 100. I'll make sure that bit stays down. As you feel the, the metal just grab. Give it a good push. You've got your part. And you can do the same with this one. Nothing in the way of this one, so I can use that big bit again. And there we've got our part with the, uh, the slight chamfer on it, the slight bevel, uh, with this bit sticking out a little bit. Uh, and that holds the part in there nicely when it's uh, stuck on the shelf. So there we go. Things you've got to do. Um, just be a, sometimes just be a little bit creative in using your machines to achieve what you need to do but then it means you can start being more creative with the overall designs of your products that you make as well anyway i hope this is useful to you uh, don't forget if it was uh, hit the like and subscribe button and uh, we'll see you again soon for another episode thank you